Hello, this is the Tradesight U.S. Stocks, Futures, and Forex Market Preview and International Economic Data Roadmap for the week beginning Sunday the 31st of January 2020, ending Friday the 5th of February. Welcome to February already. Statements printed on Friday after the close. And that's super interesting, obviously, and it is what it is. All right, in terms of uh, the Forex side first, look, there's not much to say here again. I don't want to gloss over it, but I mean, look how flat it is. This is the dollar index daily chart. You do the euro dollar and it's the inverse of the dollar index daily chart so it's just as flat the other way you look at the pound there was a limit just what's that like seven days in a row inside the same range aussie dollar uh nothing there really i mean this is just forex is just dead at the moment euro yen looks like it could break out that's super interesting the pound yen um you know obviously that 13 cell signal back in august was amazing but that's it Pound Swiss just sitting here flat. So there's not a lot to talk about there. When we look at 30 minute candles for the week on the Euro dollar, for example, high to low for the week is only about 120 pips. And that's partly because of a dip. Otherwise, it's 100 pips, right? For It's a 10 minute dip. Uh, the pound dollar is high to low for the week, uh, 100 and, you know, 140 pips. I mean, there's two 13 signals in there that hit the highs and the lows on the 30 minute charts, right? But that's about it. So, I mean, there's nothing really discussed in Forex. This is just not that interesting at the moment. Here's a look at the ES front month futures contract. This is the daily chart of the broad market and futures form. We have pulled back a bit finally. A little bit of action on Wednesday, Thursday, and Wednesday and Friday in particular finally. So, hopefully that leads to more. There's a red static trend line we'll be watching just under the $3,600 level. That's not much of a pullback. But we will be watching it. Let's go through the major daily charts. Crude oil down $0.20 to 5214 Look how flat that is even like the 13 sell signal was two and three weeks ago and we've just been dead flat ever since gold up eight dollars and sixty cents also flat for a while s p cash loses seventy three dollars and four seventy three point one four never got to the 13 sell signal nasdaq 100 down 276 now this one you can't make up 13 sell signal over a week ago hit the risk line to the tick hit it there two days in a row the pink line and then rolled over Target there is under 12,000, so keep an eye on that. The Sox loses 48 points uh, for the session. The Biotech's down 15.71.65, or up 15.71.65. Uh, Russell 2000 on there, and down 32. That's a big drop for the Russell. Let's watch that red static trend line there as well. The VIX up $2.88, now all the way back up to 33.09. Trend closing at 1.40, so that takes the 10-day moving average up to 1.08. Which is no longer a signal, but remember we did have that 10-day moving average about two weeks ago get under 0.85, and that is a sell signal on the market, and that might be what we're feeling right now. Uh, Nasdaq advanced uh, volume was 7.8 billion, down from the two days on Wednesday and Thursday. A lot of that was GameStop and all the junk that goes with that. Uh, we're not going to talk about that here. We can talk about that another time. Advanced decline ratio on the Nasdaq negative 13.81, so way more stocks down than up on Friday, down negative 13.38 on the New York. Same deal. Google loses 25.84. Apple loses 5.13. Netflix loses 6.21. Amazon down 31.42. Still stuck in this horrible range. Tesla down 41.90. Starting to roll over here. Again, that red static trend line will be the area to watch on Tesla. Facebook down $6.67. Zoom down $6.52. Goldman Sachs down $3.80. Five cents. TLT, the 20 year bond ETF, down 92 cents. Back near lows. The Dow lost 620 and it's back under 30,000. Bitcoin sitting at back up, balanced here. Look at this. Now remember, this thing's still trading. So uh, 34,980 uh, currently got up to 40,000 here over the weekend almost. So it is what it is. All right, in terms of intraday action, here's the uh, we'll go to 10 minute candles like usual on the ES so we can see the whole week. And it was kind of strange. Monday, kind of a flat opening. It finally dropped on a little shakedown because they said Mark, uh, the Washington might not be ready to do anything stimulus-wise. Then back up, went flat. Tuesday, a small gap up and then flattened out, closed about even. So at that point, we're flat, basically flat for the week. Wednesday, we gapped down, went lower, tried to bounce, then went lower. So Wednesday was some excitement for us. Thursday, gapped up, headed up, but then came back and rolled over and basically closed inside the opening five-minute candle. Friday gapping down, little bounce, and then sold off. Note the 13 sell signal. The risk line of that is the low. Can't make that up. NASDAQ side looks 
kind of similar, right? Nothing there. Uh, so we did lose a few points for the week, but we were basically flat even in the middle of the day Thursday. So it took until later than that to lose any points, which is fine. It is what it is. In terms of economic data coming out this week on Sunday, 4.30 a.m. I'm sorry, p.m. Eastern Time. These are all Eastern Time. Australia's AIG Manufacturing Index, MI Inflation Gauge at 7, ANZ Job Advertisements at 7.30, Japan's Final Manufacturing PMI, China's Caxton Manufacturing PMI, then we get to Monday, uh, Australia's Commodity Prices, German Retail Sales, Swiss Retail Sales, Spanish Manufacturing PMI, Swiss Manufacturing PMI, Italian Manufacturing PMI, French, Germany, the broad European sector, and Italian or Monthly Manufacturing PMI. Italian monthly unemployment rate than the UK's manufacturing PMI and mortgage approvals. European broad 5 a.m. unemployment rate manufacturing PMI of Canada here in the U.S. and then ISM manufacturing PMI here in the U.S. Construction spending, loan officer survey at some point during the day. Japan has their monetary base uh, rate announcement out of Australia at 10.30 p.m. Eastern time. Monday night, 10-year bond auction out of Japan. Nationwide HPI out of the UK, French preliminary CPI, Spanish unemployment change, Italian and broad European uh, flash GDP numbers, GDT price index out of New Zealand, here in the US, IBD tip economic optimism number, wards total vehicle sales, AIG construction index, uh, employment change and the unemployment rate out of New Zealand along with labor cost index, ANZ commodity prices, building approvals out of Australia, Caxton services, PMI out of China, Going to Wednesday, French government budget balance, Spanish services PMI, Italian services PMI, French final services PMI, German final services PMI, broad European final, and then UK final services PMI. Okay, they're all right there, right? Uh, CPI flash estimate out of Europe at 5 a.m. Eastern time on Wednesday. PPI also at the same time, Italian preliminary CPI, UK's 10-year bond auction, We've got the uh, ADP non-farm employment change data here in the U.S. at 8.15 a.m. Eastern Time on Wednesday. Final services PMI and ISM services PMI here in the U.S. Crude oil inventories here in the U.S. Building consents out of New Zealand. Preliminary ANZ business confidence. Trade balance out of Australia. 30-year bond auction out of Japan. Swiss SECO consumer climate. ECB economic bulletin out of Europe. UK construction PMI, Europe retail sales, Spanish 10 year bond auction, French 10 year bond auction. We've got a rate announcement out of the UK at 7 a.m. Eastern Time on Thursday, and then challenger job cuts here in the US, weekly initial and continuing jobless claims numbers, preliminary non farm productivity, preliminary unit labor costs, factory orders here in the US, Nanny Gas at 10 30, AIG Services Index out of Australia Thursday night, household spending out of Japan. Retail sales out of Australia, and then finally Friday, Japan's leading indicators, German factory orders, French preliminary private payrolls, and trade balance, foreign currency reserves out of Switzerland, Halifax HPI out of the UK, Italian retail sales, unemployment change out of Canada, the unemployment rate out of Canada, and trade balance out of Canada, there's a lot there, but at the same time, our Two of them at once, trade balance and unemployment rate plus our non, which is our non-farm payroll data, right? So two of our big three for Forex, Friday uh, at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time, be half size ahead of that, IV PMI, and then consumer credit out of the U.S. So the big stuff's on Friday, and, but there's plenty of data in here. We will just have to see what we get. It is what it is. Charts as usual brought to you by eSignal. If you've not yet taken a trial of our services, feel free to do so. We will help you out for a couple weeks, hopefully... With all that's going on right now, we'll have a better trading week. Have a good time, and uh, we will talk to you in the lab.